Well, to our big story today, major new revelation about Russia's interference in the U.S. election. We're learning more about how the Obama administration agonized over how to deal with it amid one of the most heated presidential campaigns in U.S. history. And President Trump wasted no time lashing out in a tweet. Just out, the Obama administration knew far in advance of November 8th about election meddling by Russia. Did nothing about it. Why? Question mark. OK, can I political reporter Dave Bryan joins us now on how administration insiders tackled all of this, and this was all released today. Right? That's right, Jeff. And according to the reports, it was the administration was deeply divided on this. That's the problem. Tonight, another new twist to the Russian meddling scandal. It turns out the Obama administration knew the interference was in full blast last August, but did little to stop it. The Washington Post reporting the White House was divided, struggling to come up with a plan to respond, and fearful of appearing to be interfering with the campaign. Exactly what the Russians were doing. Three months before last year's election, U.S. intelligence had evidence that the approval for Russian meddling in the American presidential race came right from the top. President Vladimir Putin. Russian hackers were busy carrying out cyber attacks and strategically released stolen Democratic Party emails, all in the cause of destroying Hillary Clinton's campaign for president and boosting the campaign of Republican Donald Trump. Wouldn't it be nice if we actually got along with Russia? A former U.S. official told CBS News the Obama administration was trying to carry out a delicate balancing act. How can we punish the Russians and not have it appear like we're trying to help Hillary? That's why ultimately the White House decided to take a defensive approach instead of a more aggressive attack, focusing on protecting state election systems from further attacks rather than have President Obama speak out and make a public issue out of it, only releasing a low-profile written statement from the Department of Homeland Security blaming Russia. Months later, when asked why his administration didn't take more aggressive action, President Obama did reveal that he personally warned Vladimir Putin to knock it off, a warning that appears to have been ignored. I felt that the most effective way to ensure that that didn't happen was to talk to him directly and tell them to cut it up. In December, a month after the election, the administration announced tougher sanctions and that it had expelled 35 Russian operatives who were believed to have been involved in the hacking and cyber attacks from the U.S. and closed down two Russian compounds on the East Coast where they were working. Former CIA Deputy Director Michael Morell says that was too little too late. The three U.S. actions I think were seen by Vladimir Putin as only a slap on the wrist. They didn't hurt him politically in any way. But former Deputy National Security Advisor Tony Blinken told CNN the administration did the best it could under the circumstances. Maybe the judgment was wrong. Maybe we should have acted differently. Uh, maybe we should have done certain things that we didn't do. But given everything we were dealing with, given, first of all, again, the perception that Russia's main objective was to undermine confidence in the elections. That was really one thing that motivated us to be careful about how we play this in public. The lead reporter for the Washington Post, which broke the story Friday morning, told MSNBC that neither administration has even now done much to secure the voting systems. The Obama administration was trying to reach out to states that operate voting systems and control voter rolls and things like that. It's very diffuse. And, um, and, and the Trump administration has, has can point to nothing that it's done so far uh, by way of securing voting mechanisms in this country. All this on a day when President Trump defended his administration on the issue of collusion with Russia and raised new questions about the objectivity of Robert Mueller, the special counsel for the Russia investigation, suggesting in an interview with Fox News that Mueller's relationship with former FBI Director James Comey may compromise his objectivity. Should he recuse himself? Well, he's very, very good friends with uh, Comey. Uh, which is very bothersome, uh, but he's also, uh, we're going to have to see. I mean, we're going to have to see in terms, look, there has been no obstruction. There has been no collusion. There has been leaking by Comey. But there's been no collusion, no obstruction, and virtually everybody agrees to that. So we'll have to see. Uh, I can say that the people that have been hired are all 
Hillary Clinton supporters. White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer later told reporters the president has no intention of firing Mueller. The White House press briefing was closed to cameras, hence the sketches often used to illustrate trials where cameras are not allowed. Now, President Trump also told Fox News he feels his tweet indicating there might be tapes of their conversations out there may have changed former FBI Director James Comey's testimony to Congress because, Trump said, he realized he would have to tell the truth about his conversations with Trump. Some critics from CNN, however, have charged that Fox News is so soft on Trump these days that it has become state-run TV. Jeff, back to you. Okay.